I told our church that we were going to start over. And yet again, I believe God said, Keon, your faith was too small. So let me blow the building down so you can build what I put in your heart. I need you to help us in rebuilding. You know, we were getting ready to do this in October anyway. And those of you all who've watched me, you've heard me say that it was time for us to expand our sanctuary. We were turning six to 700 people away every week. The parking was abysmal, but we made it. What do you think, y'all? This girl such a craziness. I'm coming to you, 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 and you with another word on the street segment. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. So, pass the key on, okay? Pass the key on, pass the key on. Now, if you haven't seen my videos I done did on this man thus far, definitely go check out these two videos right here for your girl. Yeah, and you can, you know, get while we here. So, Pastor Keon, he had a sit-down interview with another pastor that y'all might know, Jamal Bryant, that also has been in the headlines for some scandalous things, but we ain't even gonna go there. So, yes, they sat down, they talked about various things. Now, within the conversation, it was brought up about this whole church drama he had going on. And you might ask, what type of church drama are you talking about, Star? Well, let me refresh your memory. So, the brother, we all know his church was affected by a hurricane severely damaged he let us know that now on august the 11th he urged 2,000 and 100 people to contribute 2,000 and 100 each within 21 days brother we barely can get up that to get rent hell some of that is people's rent nine days sadly and to top it off he said or he described this as a divine vision from the lord child take a listen I want to increase the size of our sanctuary by two. I want to double the size of it so that no one who has an opportunity to get in is turned away because we don't have a seat. Can't give you all of the details, but let me tell you, our building is uninhabitable. As of this moment, you can't even walk in it. It's catastrophic. It's shocking. It's sobering. I need you from around the world. If I've ever preached a message that has touched your spirit, if I've ever spoken into your life and you started the company that you were not going to start had I not pushed you in faith, if you were thinking about your own life, but somehow God gave me a word that made you fight to live another day, I need you. I won't pretend like I can do this by myself. If I could do this alone, trust me, it would be done already. But I am a feeble man who puts himself at the mercy of the court and asks you to join me in a journey because we do not have time to waste. We cannot build and we cannot raise money for three years and then build another two years and have all of these people displaced. God gave me a vision and he said, we can do it in 21 days. I'm asking 2,100 people to give $2,100 in the next 21 days. And what we're calling it is out of the harbor. But my thing was you saying you can't give us all the details. Well, you need our money to help fund rebuild this church, right? You need church folks money to help do that. When we can have this in the parking lot, I'm just saying, because a word is a word, wherever it's given, okay, you shall receive it. Now, this is what he had to say when the subject was brought up on the James, um, is his name Jack? Damn, Jamal Bryant podcast. Let's be clear. George Bonner gives the data that smaller churches raise more money than bigger churches. Watch this, Keon, because those who are in smaller churches feel like the need is greater. If I'm sitting in the church with 200 people to pass and say, hey, we need a roof, everybody wow. feel like this roof ain't going to get done unless, unless I help. I, yes. In a bigger church, they're like, oh, they got it. It's going to happen. Ain't nothing to worry about. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Man. And I'm saying that to say because of the level that we are living in, people assume you are okay or that you got Bishop Jakes, you can get on the line. <laughs> you yeah. got a, oh, he don't need me to encourage him. 
Whereas if you were still in Michigan, <laughs> you had all of the passes going to take you out. Say, hey, man, we all off on Monday. Let's go see you. But at that level, it's a lonelier space because the presumption is that you have enough. So wow. The difficulty for me was realizing and accepting that I would be considered to be a part of that conversation where that oxygen is thin. Because yeah. I didn't see myself as being a part of that group. You don't have to. Being a part of that group is no rites of passage. You arrive. So you didn't get a, a button when your church got 4,000, when you got 5,000. The You crossed when you got attacked. You, you only know your significance through a attempts. Otherwise, you are nowhere on the radar when it's Take that is, oh wow, I'm up here. Man. <laughs> I I didn't realize my name will help a blogger pay rent. You put it out there, people are gonna have their opinions on it. We're gonna talk about it. It's just like, you know, if you um talk about it with your friend, hey, did you see what Pastor Jamal said about such and such or what he did in his sermon or yada yada yada? We just putting it out on the platform. Well, just I'm just speaking for me and happen to get paid for it, okay? But I ain't one of them serious bloggers now. I just do my little one-two, one-two. I don't be doing all that other stuff. People be finding people, um, baby mamas and all that. No, I ain't got time. I don't really care that much. Man. Yeah, so the, no, there, there are no blogs for, of affirmation. I uh, When Hurricane Katrina uh, happened some years ago, uh, Bishop Jakes went with President Bush and uh, went in the Superdome. And uh, Bishop Jakes called up uh, Bishop Morton. And uh, Bishop Morton prayed and sang it, and Bishop Jakes ministered. The whole world was looking at New Orleans. Half of the preachers that you and I know left and went to Baton Rouge or they went to Houston. And all of us collectively supported them, said, man, you done lost everything. And the whole world stopped. You lost your church in a hurricane and the world didn't stop. They made you an abused wife in an apostolic church and blamed you for complaining. Yeah. How did you, you're not charged with arson today from, from the Houston Police Department. Not so far. Not so far. The insurance agency is not saying... Keon has dismantled this church by himself. Yeah. The storm is in the AccuWeather report. How did you keep your mind knowing this is not a Ponzi scheme? You are, <laughs> you're not trying to move and uh, go to the Virgin Islands. You're trying to rebuild a church. And you weren't at Walmart. You became the, the manager of Target. Everywhere for wanting to rebuild a church. Tell me, do you then say, oh, man, because they attacking me? Let me just leave the church empty. <laughs> let me, at, let me at leave. First, at first, I was like, be honest with you, I was like, what did I do wrong? Mm. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I, I literally couldn't figure it out. Because in March, on our first Fruit Sunday, the ask was the year we said either – 2025 or 225 dollars and and the church responded it was it was our big give sunday it was the no. largest give sunday we had all year i had been talking to our church about renovating the building anyway this is a capital campaign that was already in motion but because our church was displaced and we didn't have a place to meet i spoke to them through the internet because i didn't have a church to gather them in to tell right them. right so i posted it to send to them Right, And I woke up one morning and all hell had broken loose and I started receiving text messages from everywhere and I didn't really know what I had done wrong. Right, That's where I started. So I first started off confused, regretful. Steve Harvey told me, he said, regret is the most worthless emotion in the earth. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, so I was regretful. Then I started bouncing back like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. I didn't ask for this for me. I did this because I had intel. I knew the shortfall of what the insurance claim would be. By the way, the insurance and the adjuster just came to our church Tuesday. No way. 
So I don't know when this will air. Right. They just came Tuesday. I walk in the church. This is this is this is documentable and true. Yeah. I walked in the church Tuesday to look at the gymnasium to see how they were gonna set up for our first Sunday back. Yeah. The insurance agent and the adjuster are in the building, let in by facilities. Unbeknownst to me, I don't know they're there. Right. Walk in. I see the guys over there with the pens. Say, hey, gentlemen, Keon Henderson. They said, oh, pastor. <laughs> they said, oh, we just finished talking bad about you. This is what they said. Yeah. I said, don't feel bad. I've been talking about y'all since June. <laughs> I've been talking bad about y'all since July 8th when the hurricane happened. Right. I've been talking bad about y'all the whole time because we we got we to gotta get to the finish line on this. Right. There's no doubt what happened here. Right. The storm did this. Right. And that man looked at me and he said, this, finally this Tuesday, he said, we're going to treat you better than you've been talking about us. Wow. So I had to build a case with them to let them know we were not going to deal with unfair treatment. Yeah. That you were not going to find a way to scapegoat this. And anybody who knows anything about insurance, their job is to make the premium high and the payout low. That's the only way you stay in business. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So, so we were struggling to figure out what's the shortfall because what they were going to give us wouldn't even get us back what we had. Mm. So the shortfall was the ask. Yeah. Hindsight, what I would have done is I would have, number one, been a little more sensitive about the ask in the time we were in because the members were recovering as well. Right. Um, since we didn't have a large portion of our church members come in and saying that they needed assistance, it didn't compute to me that we had anyone struggling. Right. Um, Number two, I would have cut the cameras off and just talked to our church individually. Mm -hmm. But then I woke up and said, 70% of our members don't attend the building. They're online. And the people online of our church have responded to that plea in a way that I cannot even quantify. Amazing. So here's where I finished off. A naysayer is somebody who's a small person that has something to say about big things. Mm. And I refuse to allow my ministry to be marked by the criticism of an unwarranted offense. Yeah. My heart was right. Yeah. It was pure. I just got to deal with the punches that people are throwing. Yeah. And so that guy who was scared and unsure and all that, he gone. <laughs> Yeah. He gone because what God's about to do at 6650 Rankin Road and the rebuild process that he's about to take us through yeah. and the way the members of the Lighthouse Church have responded. We had 120 people join Sunday. Good grief. So as long as I got them still trusting me, yeah. I'm still on the wall like Nehemiah, man. Yeah. And sometimes you got to watch. Yeah. Sometimes you got to fight. Sometimes you got to pray. And I had to do all three yeah. in that. My heart was right. No, that's great. Man. My heart was right. And God is going to honor that. All right, then. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Him, to me, he was playing victim, but it is what it is. It's just my thoughts. But what did you think? Let me know, and I'll see you on the next one.